transitioning to another feet strut zone. Quiet neighborhood. And again, access to these houses along the feet strut. articulation to some the agricultural establishments along here and then more housing so right next door you've got greenhouses and houses surface trail here as Peter was saying this will get taken care of in the future yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. here we go yeah and again uh, Peter and Sven were saying that this is a surface that was required initially because of concerns about the nature impacts of having asphalt here. They're going to be able to go ahead and establish a smooth surface, a paved surface through here now, which is going to be good because you can tell that the rain creates potholes and a muddy experience for people along here but you can tell how beautiful it really truly is as well they should be able to use a permeable surface along here that might be something that they're working on is a, a type of surface that's a little more eco-friendly than just your standard concrete or standard approach with uh, asphalt. It's permeable treatments that are available now. It's very nice hearing the, the wind through the trees. Hopefully the wind's not too bad on the microphone here. As they mentioned, this was a, a, an abandoned railway corridor through here. You see some of the new trees that have been planted along the way. And then we also see the lighting that they have. So they have the lighting for the pathway as well. Again, trying to keep up the standards for the cycle highways in place, according to the, the area here in East Flanders nice we also see some benches along the way as well and then again we see the transition off of the pathway that's considered multi-use pathway to 30 kilometer per hour zone and again sort of a shared space rural context a lot of the, the farms in this area.
And transitioning back into the natural surface trail area. Little homage to the fact that this was a rail corridor. And we're crossing one of the major highways here. See, we've got a little spiral that we'll use. Around and round and round we go. And it feeds us right back into a little feed strut here. Earth is very soft. Today. Today, quite difficult. We will stop at the next county. Yeah, what the hell is it? For the the citizens of Ghent, Ghent is over there. This is also um, Ghent, but uh, there are less houses. There is really um, the core city in here. Core city is over there. In the suburban district of Ghent. Yeah, suburban district. Mm -hmm. But to get to have the the people of Ghent to uh, go to reach the the, the, the landscape, the recreational landscape, where they go, can go walking, cycling, and so on. It's just five kilometers, four or five kilometers. Um, but to get over uh, there is a big canal. 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 They yeah. built it in the late 50s, 50s yeah. in order to avoid through shipping for yeah. the city. You know, all commercial shipping has to go around the city. Mm -hmm. And also for the water in Ghent. Uh, we have two big rivers here, the Leie and the Scheldt. So uh, this part of Ghent was uh, in winter times so a lot of uh, flooding. flooding. Yeah. So and they built the the ring uh, canal and the ring road and, and the, the ring road, ring road as well. yeah there is the big ring road the r4 the ring around uh, ghent and there is the e40 the you know, the biggest motorway in our country so to get from the city center four kilometers further in the recreational landscape uh, we needed a, a, a safe um, cycle highway mm -hmm. and uh, yeah there are big uh, highways to get there but they are not safe hey hello um, so we uh, decided, I think uh, 20 years ago, the first plan was to uh, establish here, to develop here a cycle uh, highway. And uh, those, but we needed to cross those barriers of motorway, ringway, ring canal. We needed uh, bridges and uh, they were uh, designed, developed, I think uh, 10, 15 years ago, uh, built in uh, 19... 16 1917 uh, excuse me 2016 2017 but it is in the the mindset of uh, 15 years ago so it's a uh, three and a half wide and uh, so that's why it, it feels a little uh, uh, small but it's very good it's very the nice thing 
it, it is there. <laughs> That's the most there. important thing. And you see today, <laughs> yeah. now it's uh, one o'clock, uh, almost one o'clock. And today already 800, more than 800 cyclists passed uh, here. So uh, at the end of the day, it will be about 1,500, 1,400 cyclists uh, in summer times that will pass here. You see also the, the spiral uh, bridge. Um, yeah, that's because uh, the scars of uh, space we have in Flanders, in Ghent, in a, a very urbanized uh, region. We have scar space, so you have to be inventive. Because also yeah. because there are adjacent housing, and if you wanted to serve those houses and to have a cycle, you would have need two stretches of concrete just next to each other, and that would be very stupid. Because those uh, houses is just used by a car a day, so we it was joined, and therefore we had the uh, spiral bridge. Yeah. Okay, that's the story of connecting. The, the city of Ghent with more than 250,000 people with a recreational landscape south of Ghent with uh, this uh, cycle highway but also with the towns in the south uh, of Ghent. Okay. Now we are going across this bridge and at the other side I'll give some other explanations. Yeah. Now the cycle path we will follow is a cycle path between the trees okay. and it was okay until five years ago because it was a dead end and it has been like that for almost uh, at least for a half a century because when I started to study that's almost a half a century ago it was still like that and you will see it's uh, bumpy and it's too narrow and so what could we what can we do what are the options you could cover it with asphalt but it would still be too narrow the second option is remove the cycle path and enlarge it but we can't do it because of the trees because the greenery department says if you do this all trees will uh, perish yeah, so we yeah. can't do it so the idea now is the left part we will uh, try it to convert in a bicycle street with car traffic only for adjoining uh, adjacent buildings university buildings and all the cars and the true traffic would then be on the right and the discussion is now if it should be sec uh, two ways, but, but it would mean removing all parkings. Yep. If it would be one way, you could keep the parking on the right hand side, parking on the left hand side, which would probably have to go anyhow. Okay, okay. And you will see you can't, uh, it's far too narrow the lane between the trees. Let's go. Little narrow. <laughs> and again, this is a little narrow, a little rough. Narrow and, and rough. We uh, should, we and should you, do something about it. Yeah, yeah. About how many years do you think it would take to get this uh, fixed uh, based on election, everything? When there is political will, after yeah. the elections, you can do it in three months. Okay, fantastic. You just have to remove the cars, uh, make it, put up signs, yeah. and make true car traffic impossible on the left hand side. Yeah. The right hand side would then be for the true, true car traffic. Right. And this would be green or given to pedestrians. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And this would make a nice walkway for pedestrians. It in would be a nice, nice yes. walkway for pedestrians. Or you could yes. just remove the pavement and have grass in it. Yeah. Yeah. But it is beautiful uh, to to be able to stroll down this with the yeah. trees. So. Yes, yes, it's yeah. nice. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. And 
we see some university buildings here. Lots of bike parking here at these classrooms. And again, on the left-hand side, they will create a Fietzstraat, remove that parking, have the right-hand side be for the through traffic. That's what Peter's saying. school preschool there yeah Just a quick word on what we so what we have had you you will agree this is not uh, bicycle highway quality we all know we should do something about it so now we go a little bit further and 10 years ago or even uh, eight years ago there was a new tram line and we took the opportunity to put in decent uh, bicycle paths although with our old design standards which called for one meter 75 for an in any directional uh, bicycle path, you will see after the second uh, traffic light, the, uh, the bicycle path will go to the street, a bit of lesser quality, but it's due for refurbishment as well. And there we will apply our new standard of two meters for a unidirectional uh, bicycle path. Now, then we go further, we come at a roundabout, and this roundabout is the official start of the bicycle highway. And for, from there on, the, si the, uh, the signposting starts yep. or will end. Yep. And then after we will go under the railway, then we will enter the real city heart of Ghent. And we will, after just a while, we go to the right to look for the Skelt River. And we use uh, the rivers as way of penetrations for cyclists into the city. And what you will see, when we hit the river at the right, you will see a newly built bridge, beautiful bridge. We won't use it. We go to the left and we will use an underpass. And we have lots of those underpasses under busy roads. There it's the uh, inner ring road, a road with 30,000 cars a day. And, but now you can go to, through an underpass and it's an underpass of the first generation. Again, conceived 15, 20 years ago. Now uh, with hindsight, it should have been um, broader, wider. But we have, and some of you might see them uh, tomorrow on the bike parade, we have also the second generation of underpasses are quite wider than this one we're going to use in uh, five minutes. So we'll now have the good asphalt, then a bit of worse. Uh, uh, Much worse. It's a really worse uh, cycle uh, path, and then it's mixed traffic. Once yeah. we're uh, after the third traffic light, it's mixed traffic, but then we go to the river and the underpass. Yes, let's go to the right. Just to the right here. I'm assuming he's not supposed to be there. <laughs> he's not supposed to be there. Contra flow, which is very dangerous. Many cyclists don't realize it. Or, yeah. uh, and especially if it's on a, a motorbike, it's uh, faster. And people coming out, coming from uh, the terrain, just look to the left. Yeah. Don't look to the right because they don't expect any traffic. And yeah. deadly accidents have happened. So not, not yes. Like this. Yeah. So again, a little narrow here, but still well, quite nice. Yeah, but uh, the new one, this is the old design standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The new one calls for two meters for uh, one uh, directional yeah. bicycle path. Yeah. Here it's still 175, yeah. a bit wide. Yeah. Because if you have two meters, you can overtake uh, a slower cyclist quite comfortably. Yeah. Here, uh, it's a little bit too narrow. It's a little bit. But still quite nice to have it. It's still quite yeah. nice to have it, really, yeah. because you will see further on, it's still the old situation there. Yeah. 
And actually, it is a football match, it's about 4,000 trackers. About there. So from here on, that's the last cycle path, but from beyond the, the traffic lights is uh, mixed traffic and we'll go to the right uh, at the first intersection and we'll go to look for the water and then you'll see the, it's a kind of cycle highway along the water, it's also with car, uh, the traffic moderation, there's uh, very few car mm -hmm. traffic along it and it's also uh, Fitzstraat and you will see then the underpass. Sorry, what's the plan for that street that we passed uh, now? Well, it, it's you have seen the first bit yeah. in asphalt, it was 175, but it will refurbish again with a separation between the street, then the parked car and then the cycling okay. and two meters. Two or, meters new, or new design yeah. standards go for two meters. When is and even happen? when it's very busy, even for three meters. Maybe we, I, I don't know whether they're going to do it, I'm not <laughs> working for the city anymore, but here we have room for it. Yeah. You have seen yeah. it's a very, it's huge. very uh, huge uh, space. When is it going to happen? In two years' time, because they told me I'm not an engineer, but for some hydrological reasons, you have to do the first one. Okay, oh, let's go. I've been very impressed with the number of people I'm seeing riding yeah. here in Ghent. Is how how much if, has that transformed? over your career you've been yes, with the when, city when I started we had yeah. the 14 percent 14 so one four 14 percent of the journeys of the people of Ghent were made by bicycle yeah it was in back in 99 when we had the first travel survey and our latest travel survey was in uh, 21 and then there was about one third 33 yeah percent of all journeys of the people of Ghent yeah. are now made by bicycle. Yeah. So it has gone up sharply. Yeah. And what I love about this, Peter, is what we're seeing right here is we're seeing many younger yes. citizens, you know, we're seeing the kids getting around. Yes, because uh, it's traffic count, it's 30 kilometers per hour, you have bicycle infrastructure. So if your child behind haste reasonably, you can uh, actually trust them and go to school on the bike. Yeah. Here we go to the right in a bicycle street. And how long has it been now uh, that Belgium has been work doing the Fietstraats? The Fietstraat uh, is the first one we had in Ghent in 2011, so 13 mm -hmm. years ago. Okay. And since then, it, it, then it was in the, tra the traffic rules and now I guess especially in the northern part and the yeah. Dutch speaking part about every local uh, authority has some kind of uh, Fietstraat. Okay. okay. And here you see it when it's a Fietstraat it's in red. Yeah. And we have the uh, symbol in the beginning. Yeah. And this might be some colleagues of yours. Are those a fellow city? I think So the underpass is uh, really very worthwhile because at the bridge, mm -hmm. we will see it in just a moment, there's uh, 30, 25 to 30,000 cars. It's very, very difficult to cross. Yeah. And since we had the underpass now 10, 12 years, uh, traffic, car traffic, uh, mm -hmm. bicycle traffic has gone up on this, uh, on this cycleway. Yeah. 
it seems like the city, as it continues to build out the network to encourage more people to ride, uh, that is happening. It also seems like um, the ability to create some disincentives for people to drive helpful yeah well, <laughs> yeah we have a circulation plan that yes. makes it a little bit difficult yeah. to, to drive so yes yeah here we go to the right all right now we're going under yeah under. here we go very nice Then we pop back up onto a feet strut. Right. And we see the counter here closing in on 1300. Then now you have to take a slope. This is our abbey. So this is our uh, last stop. You, see, you saw the underpass in here. We use the river to get into the city. Here it's car free. If you cross the bridge and you go further along the water, it's a bicycle street with uh, few cars and mainly bicycles. But here we can we, we go up. Uh, it's called Kantinberg. Berg means mountain. We're in the low countries and every difference of height of five meters, it's a mountain for us. So uh, that's uh, Kantinberg and it has a peculiarity. You know, this is a protected building, a protected area. There's a, say, the 18th century abbey. So the heritage people wanted to have cobblestones. But here at least they let us have a, a narrow stripe in uh, concrete for a bicycle conference. So you have to go up. but you uh, can use the, the concrete. When we almost above, you will see a square, a square with um, trees and terraces. And this square is also new because let's say 12 years ago, it was just car parking. And there was true traffic from the, the motorway. There's an access to the motorway to the ring road. So we had what you call in English rat running. So uh, mm -hmm. traffic that shouldn't be here, but was here. So by creating this square, we cut all true traffic. We have trees, we have a nice uh, square. Is that the Plain? Mm -hmm. so no, no, it's ma not Mazé, it's Kramers Plain. Yeah. Mazé Plain is in the city centre. Okay. And then further on, we'll go to the venue because we are not so very far. We will use a cycle path between the trees, the, like the other one, but it's better. It's uh, flat and it's, uh, and it's also new. It's uh, about 12, 13 years old and it's very, it's, it's a, a kind of symbol of the conversion of Ghent because before it was just car parking and now it's a cycle path with uh, cycle stands in between and you mm. will then hit again the ring road and you see we'll have an own uh, cycle lights to cross the ring road and then we're in the park and we're just about uh, 100 meters of the venue. The tours are converging. I guess so, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Here it's a little yeah. bi-directional. Yeah, bi-directional. And we see lots of bike parking in here yeah. as well. Because we're in the students' quarter. Yeah, students. Lots and lots of students here. Yeah, yeah. There's just something nice about riding through trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> very pleasant. Yeah, very pleasant. And here we are. Here we go.
Okay, the tour ends here. I hope you enjoyed uh, yes. our Flemish uh, highways and also some infrastructure in the city of Ghent, apart from Danze, which is really amazing. I have to do yes. so for uh, Danze. Yes. Uh, we'll end here, but many of you have my maybe their bike at the railway station, but it's just 10, 12 minutes walking yeah. from the venue. You can recuperate it quite easy. So thank you and thank see you later. <laughs> And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.